Uh, hi, and welcome to the March edition of According to Pete. Today I'm going to talk about MOSFETs. Uh, as I uh, always say, there's, there's more information about MOSFETs than I can possibly cram into 15 or 20 minutes. So naturally, I'm going to shortcut it and I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to try to uh, give you what you need to get yourself into trouble uh, so you can, you know, get your hands dirty, uh, but not so much as to confuse the, the average noob or myself. So, what's a MOSFET? Uh, the word, the word, the acronym, stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. So what does that mean? Let's draw some pictures and I'll show you. Okay, if you remember from a previous episode, this <laughs> is a BJT. Uh, bipolar junction transistor. It's made up of three different regions. Uh, we got an N region, we got a P region, we got another N region, right? So this is an NPN transistor, like a 2N3904 garden variety junk, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, the N region is um, doped in such a way that it has an excess of electrons. The P region is doped in such a way that it has an excess of holes. Holes. Uh, and then you get another N region up here, okay? And the gist of this, if you recall, is that in order to get current to go this way, uh, okay, you guys are gonna bust me on conventional current flow versus electron current, or con yeah, conventional versus, all right. All right, conventional current flow, it's gonna go that way, fine, that way, conventional. Uh, in order for that to happen, you've gotta have a current running from base to emitter. Small current through this junction equals a large current through the whole device. Okay, simple enough. So that's the BJT. This is a MOSFET. Specifically, it is an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Uh, enhancement mode versus uh, what's called depletion mode. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there are also um, P-channel MOSFETs, but I'll get to that in a bit too. Um, this one is going to be an N-channel MOSFET. And what they do, right, like versus the BJT, they start with a P substrate, okay, or body, they call it the body. Um, and then they deposit some N material in one spot and some more N material in another spot. And then they put a layer of silicon dioxide here. And then they put an electrode up here and that's a wire. And this guy gets a wire and this guy gets a wire. And um, that's what that is. This one's called the source, this one is called the drain, this is called the gate. And then they put a little tab on the body too. Um, and there are some parts where you, you actually have this external, but almost always this body electrode is tied to the source. And the reason for that is it jacks with the operation of the thing. And I hope that's gonna become clear as we go on. Um, what you do, N-channel MOSFET, source goes to ground, okay? Drain goes uh, to your load and then up to VCC. Yeah, I know you can't read that, right? Fine, fine, fine. And then you put a positive voltage on the gate with respect to the source, okay? And what actually happens here is that this positive voltage draws electrons into this region between the source and the drain, okay? Now, at a certain voltage, called the threshold voltage, you get enough electrons in here that a channel opens up and you actually get current flow, conventional current flow, right? Uh, from drain to source. Check that out, pretty cool, huh? Now the coolest thing about this is this didn't take a control current the way the BJT did, okay? It only takes a control voltage. Um, so it's a really high input impedance and it's a really low output impedance, and it makes a great switch. It's faster than a BJT, too, so if you've got a high-speed application or something, this is a better way to go. And this is why they call it enhancement mode, right? The part is normally off, and you turn it on, so you're completing the channel. You are enhancing its ability to carry current or some such. As opposed to a depletion mode part, there are depletion mode MOSFETs as well um, that are normally on, and you turn them off with a control voltage. Uh, I actually went looking on DigiKey for these uh, in the past couple of days. I've never used a depletion mode part, and I was like, oh, I wonder how prevalent they actually are. Well, there's something like 26,000 
MOSFET parts on DigiKey. And of them, I think I saw 89 that were depletion mode. So you almost never run into these things for some reason. So this thing is normally off and you turn it on enhancement mode N channel, because it is N, and uh, N is related to electrons, so they call it N channel MOSFET. This is an N channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Oh my god, that thing is confusing, isn't it? Okay, this, this is sort of the breakdown here. Um, gate, gate, source, drain. The source, mm, okay, a couple of things. Enhancement mode, enhancement mode is usually indicated by the broken line here, okay? I think that's supposed to symbolize the channel, right? That you enhance to complete that line, something like that. If the arrow is pointing in, end channel. Um, I liken this to my transistor example where I said the arrow points to the end material. Well, this one doesn't point to the end material, but it does point to the end channel. <laughs> hey, whatever. This action, right, you see two of these things. When you see that sort of thing, that means the body is tied to the source internally, okay? Um, and just in case I haven't covered it uh, clearly, I'll mention, the reason they tie the body to the source, um, the body, this guy, this can actually act as another gate. And if you leave this thing float, it'll have an effect on the threshold voltage that actually turns the part on. So what they do is they just tie this thing to source or, or they'll leave it open for the user to decide if you want to tie it to something else. Maybe you do, I don't know. Something else worth mentioning, these things are uh, really sensitive to ESD. So what part manufacturers will do, and you'll see this in their little schematic symbols, they'll throw a diode, right, right across there. Um, if that diode was not there, you would trash these things constantly. I know I said in a previous episode that, hey, I've got a superpower. ESD doesn't come near me. Well, if it wasn't for that, it would probably be in my face all the time. Now, if this were symbol for a P channel, what you'd actually see, um, you'd see the arrow out here. You'd see this guy up here. And this is actually very nice. <laughs> the source and this is actually a big scribbly thing that makes a mess that becomes the drain and the whole thing flips around uh, as it were and the diode is reversed so it doesn't pass current the way you don't want it to physically what happens here is that um, they basically reverse everything okay so instead of the P substrate you have N substrate, and you get a P section and another P section, um, and instead of electrons that you attract to the channel, you attract holes, right? So those are positive bits, um, and you reverse bias, just like a PNP transistor, right? The, the source goes to the higher voltage, the gate is pulled lower with respect, and the drain is lower still, okay? PNP. So let's talk about biasing one of these things. Um, let me show you what the, 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 the characteristic curve of the operation looks like. This is a plot, very generic plot, does not apply to any specific part that I've whipped up here. Uh, this is a voltage drained to source, right? So this might be, you know, one volt, two volt, three volt, four volt, five volt. I'm just making this junk up. Um, drain to source voltage versus current through the drain, okay? For given values of gate to source voltage. So what I have here, right, on my vertical axis, I've just labeled one amp, two amp, three amp, four amp. Uh, and each of these plots is, you know, gate to source voltage equals one, gate to source voltage equals two, three, four. Okay, there are two regions of interest here. This region here, they call the ohmic region, okay? And this region out here is called saturation. Um, and we'll talk about saturation in a little bit. But what you should get from this plot is that for a given gate voltage, right? So if I put like one, one volt across this uh, gate to source, I can expect about one amp of drain current maximum for a very wide range of voltages across drain to source, okay? It's acting like a current limiting device. You can actually bias one of these things in the ohmic region, 
which is sort of equivalent to uh, transistor biasing if you want to do like a class A amplifier or something, but it's really twitchy to get it down in there. Um, and really with the prevalence of, of op amps, you don't really need to do small signal amplification with a MOSFET. You don't, you don't really get anything from it. I'd still use uh, uh, you know, an op amp or something for that. Um, typically, uh, well, I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, I, can see, I can see biasing a MOSFET sort of kind of this way for like a power amplifier and your stereo. Um, but yeah, probably not even that. I don't think I'd use it. You can do it, but it's tricky. It's a pain to <laughs> nail something in that region. Um, more often than not, you can expect them to be in the saturation region. And I was, I was about to say, I thought about saying, as a switch, you bias this in the saturation region. Not true because, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a sec. Saturation is when the channel is maxed out for current. Um, and I'm going to describe that in the next section. So let's imagine, for example, that it's, I've done it exactly the way I said I would, which is to say, uh, tie the source to ground, tie the gate to some higher voltage than that, and this is, you know, to the source, da, 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 da. and the drain is like to some load and VCC. Okay, when a channel opens up here, um, what actually happens, I'm not going to draw this, well, I'll just draw it like, yay. <whistles> draw your attention to it. It's narrower towards the drain. Okay, why does that happen? You have a high current going through the channel, and the channel is a non-zero resistance. Okay, so what happens is that for any, for any given point that you select in the length of the channel, it's like a different part in that resistor, okay? So down here, the voltage from, from the body to the gate is highest, right? Uh, a little bit higher, it's a little bit less voltage. It, and now, you, you see like RDS on for some of these parts is ridiculously small. That may be, but when you're drawing amps through this channel, this becomes a thing that you have to concern yourself with. So by the time you actually get up to the top of the channel, you get a narrowing of the channel, and that's, that's resistance, okay? Now when you draw enough current through this thing, it'll actually go like that, and it'll, it'll squash off. This is called saturation. That point where that happens, that's saturation, because the more voltage that you put across the source to drain, all it does is try to yank more current through this, and it pinches it off more. So that's why the lines in that plot are flat. That's why you only get, you know, one volt, two volt, three volt, volt, amp, <laughs> amp. That's why you only get one or two or three amps for a given gate voltage across a wide range of voltages from source to drain, okay? It's called pinch off, that's saturation, and that's why those lines are flat. The things you want to think about when you're sourcing a MOSFET for um, a thing, or the, the basic gist of using a MOSFET as a switch. I'm not gonna tell you how to bias it as a, as a yeah, forget that. I'm gonna tell you how to use it as a switch. I wanna choose a part that is able to source enough current for a given gate voltage that's way more current than I'm gonna need, right? So if I've got a load that's, um, 150 milliamps or something, and I'm driving this from the, the output of an Arduino or something, uh, I'm gonna have, you know, 3.3 to 5 volts to put on the gate of a MOSFET. So when I'm choosing a part that's going to drive something else, I wanna make sure that at three volts gate voltage, it's gonna be able to source amps, right? That will ensure that the channel, the channel is nice and fat and wide and untaxed and it can pass as much current as it needs to and I'm not gonna to have to worry about it. When you're using it as a switch, you don't want this thing in saturation and that's why I choose like, you know, it, for, for, the, for the plot, it's gonna say like, you know, VGS equals three volts and I want that current to be like amps. I don't, want the I don't want the part to be in saturation. I, want it I don't want it to be limiting. Don't want it to be limiting. The next thing, you always want to take a resistor from the gate and tie it to the source. The reason you do this is because if for some reason your output pin 
uh, on your microcontroller or whatever's driving the gate of this part, if for some reason it's floating, the part's gonna be on, okay? Doesn't take a current to turn this on. It only takes a voltage. And if you leave that sucker float, it's gonna turn on. So always tie the gate down to where it's off, all right? The other thing you want to take into consideration when choosing a part is um, dissipation, power. If, for example, I had this thing tied to, uh, you know, 25 volts and I expect it to draw, you know, if my load only takes like half an amp or an amp, uh, that's cool, but I don't plan for that with the power dissipation. What I plan for is if my load somehow shorts, that part, the MOSFET, is going to start dropping, you know, 25 volts at X number of amps. It's going to be fully saturated and it's going to be dropping a lot of power. So make sure that you choose a part that can dissipate that power. That way, if something tanks in your circuit, it's not going to destroy itself. It's not going to start fire. And also make sure that you heat sink the device so that it can dissipate that. A TO220 package MOSFET will, you know, dissipate a couple of watts probably comfortably. Uh, after that, it's going to get real unhappy. So you'll want to heat sink that sucker just in case something happens. So now I'm going to give you an example of uh, biasing one of these things. It's a P-channel, actually. Uh, and this is a real-world example. Um, and it will serve to, to, to show you how to do this, sort of, kind of. And it will also be an admission of guilt for something that I said in a previous episode. I think it was just the last one, in fact. I was recently at uh, TEI in Kingston, Ontario. And I was helping a, a gentleman named Mike to um, drive one of our 24 volt uh, solenoids. And he wanted to do it with a MOSFET. Problem was, he didn't have a MOSFET. And the only MOSFET we had was one of the, uh, one of the big P channels that we have on the storefront. Um, ideally, it would have been great to have an N channel, but we didn't, we had the P channel. And so, and so, this is how I set the thing up, right? Here's the coil for the um, solenoid. Here's my P-channel MOSFET. And the, the gist of this is, right, I, I'd said, like in a previous episode, I said, oh, if I wanted to drive a higher voltage, I'd just, you know, high Z the, uh, the, the, in, the, the pin on the Arduino, right? So it's like a big resistance. It's basically not drawing any current. So then, um, yeah, so this is my Arduino pin. Ard, which you totally cannot read. I was actually driving this thing with 15 volts. This is a 10K resistor that pulls it, pulls the gate up to the source. You'll notice the source goes high, the drain goes low, and um, and that was it. So the the whole idea was that when I turn the output pin of the Arduino on to either 5 volts or 3.3 volts or even zero volts, because the gate voltage on this thing would take quite a bit. When you're looking at parts, <laughs> if I didn't say this, one of the specs you want to look at in their data sheet is um, maximum gate to source voltage. Make sure you're not going to go too far or you will pop the silicon dioxide and then, then you're toast. So I had my source pulled high. I had the drain going to the coil here and I had this thing pulled high to 15 volts. So the idea is that if I turn the Arduino pin to input, it goes high Z state, which is effectively a really, really large resistance, and the 10K would pull this up to 15 volts, okay? In theory, that's how you would bias this thing. You, you would pull this down, lower than source, by some voltage, turns on the channel, current passes to your load, okay? In my case, this did not work. And, and I'd never bothered to read the data sheet of the Atmega 328, right? I had suspected that something was there, but when I actually hooked this up, when Mike and I hooked this up, what we saw was that when you send that pin to a high Z state, when you send it to input state, this, nice, uh, this point actually goes to about 5.78 volts, I think is what we saw, and it stops. It does not go to 15 volts. Why is that? What's going on? Okay, the reason is because, and you can, you can surmise this probably, a lot of you already know what's going on, and this was the big tip-off, right? That's about a, that is about one diode drop, okay? So what you have on the Arduino pin, Arduino, on the Atmega 328 pin, right, their, their output is actually um, t 
tied to five volts um, with, uh, with a diode. So if this, have I got that backwards? So if this goes high, yeah, I do have that backwards. Um, yeah, like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Really readable. Good job, Pete. The point of doing this is that if this line is pulled higher than five volts, it's just going to drop current back to the five volt supply. And this is exactly what this was doing. So what we actually had to do, right, is drive this thing with another part. Standard NPN transistor that I talked about before, right? So there's our Arduino pin. Uh, I R R D Ard. 330 ohm uh, limiting resistor for the base emitter junction. So basically, all this does, right? If this pin goes high, it turns this transistor on, pulls this low, turns the MOSFET on. Okay, makes sense. Um, when you shut this device off, right? When you pull this pin low, turns off the transistor. This becomes a high Z part, a very large resistor. Uh, much larger than 10K, the gate is pulled up to 15 volts, part turns off. Okay, so on the one hand, this is how you bias a P-channel transistor correctly from an Arduino pin. Um, and secondly, sorry, goofed up. Uh, I made an assumption before and it bit me, as assumptions always do. You know what they say about assumptions. And that's about all I have to say about using a MOSFET as a switch. So thanks for tuning in today. Keep the comments coming. You can put your questions in the comment section below or you can email them to feedback at sparkfun.com. Uh, so thanks for watching. See you next time.